under the Thanks governor, California's uh, economy becoming the world's fifth largest. Not surprising that investors like him. Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, investors really credit Brown for turning around the state's finances. I mean, he inherited $27 billion deficit, and over his tenure, we've seen those deficits turn into surpluses, and the economy has been, has been booming. He seems to have really turned things around while still focused on the state's bottom line. Well, you can see why bondholders would like that, Romy, but how did he do it, and what does that tell the, his successor about what they might continue? Well, he did it um, by being really focused on paying down the state's debt. Um, he did institute some spending cuts. He held the line on new spending commitments. And he also benefited from voters approving um, tax hikes. And he also worked really well with the, with the legislature, the Democrats in the legislature. So th through these moves and, and the fact that the economy did do well, the, um, he benefited from Silicon Valley, he benefited from um, the housing market coming back but throughout this he's kept this um, attitude of he needs to keep an eye on the state's fiscal bottom line um, he needs to pay down the state's debt and also he really prioritized starting to save up for the next downturn so who are the front runners trying to replace him and what do bond investors think about them well the, the first contender that seems likely to advance to the general election is Gavin Newsom. He's a former mayor of San Francisco. He's currently the lieutenant governor. Um, in the running is also Antonio Villaraigosa. He is a former mayor of Los Angeles. And we also have um, John Chung, the current state treasurer. And these are all Democrats. And the, it seems like the top Republican will be John Cox. He is a businessman originally from um, Illinois, who's now in the um, San, Di San Diego area. And the issue for bond investors, though, is that none of these candidates have detailed what they're going to do in terms of how they're going to finance their, their lofty goals of you know, easing homelessness and addressing the state's really um, big problem of affordable housing. Um, they haven't disclosed any details on, the, on, that, on that level, um, in that level that the investors want. And, um, Investors feel that they don't know how they will respond in the next recession, which Brown warns repeatedly is due to come, and none of the candidates have detailed plans on how they would handle that. In fairness, though, Romy, did, did Jerry Brown have a detailed plan when he came in? Was he something of a surprise as it turned out to be kind of a deficit hawk? I think it did take investors by surprise. Um, that he had, a, he had a reputation for being Governor Moonbeam, after all. Mm -hmm. But he did turn things around. So that is one, um, one thing that investors are hopeful that the next person who gets into the governor's office, um, even though they don't have detailed plans now and even though they are promising quite a bit, perhaps when they get into the governor's house, the uh, governor's office, they will turn, um, they will be more fiscally minded. But the issue here is that right now, Things are booming. The economy is booming. Um, you know, when Jerry Brown took office, uh, he had to deal with a $27 billion deficit. So voter expectations are different. The mindset is a bit different. So the fear is among investors is that the next governor might overcommit to spending. And that would be very problematic in the next recession.